Hello everyone and welcome to ZBrush Core Mini. Ever since the initial video announcing the existence of this new product, I've seen an overwhelmingly positive response from everyone in Discord and YouTube comments, but I have also seen a fair few people just not really know how to do this, how to use the program, and especially just trying 3D for the first time. So in this video, I'm really going to go over the absolute basics. I wouldn't really call it a ZBrush Core mini tutorial, more so to try and give you guys a bit more of a hands-on approach as to how to even approach this for the very first time. So first things first, if you want to install ZBrush Core mini, it is free, it is official, it's in the video description down below. Now the first thing you're gonna see is this, you're gonna see a sphere. The sphere is gonna be very blank, very daunting, but it is your free canvas to do whatever you want with it. You can do this with either a tablet and pen, that way you get pressure sensitivity, or you can do it with a pen and mess around the Z intensity bar up here will impact just how intense your brush strokes are. So if you want to have like a very large and dramatic brush stroke, want to ramp it up quite high, if you want to be very subtle, very light detailing or very light changes, you'll want to put it down quite low. Now on a similar stem to that, right next to the Z intensity is a draw size. And as you can probably tell just from the icon itself, that changes how big and how small the area of effect of your brush is. On the left hand side, you have your various tools. Rather than telling you what each and every one it actually does, I would honestly just recommend go through each option and just have a play around with it. Personally, my best experience from learning is just by messing around and trying something. I would not recommend you dive into drawing something immediately. Rather, select each one, have a look at how they interact, maybe use a clay polish and see just exactly what that does. Use an inflate tool, put it anywhere you want and notice, oh, okay, that's not actually that strong, maybe if you try it over there, or oh, okay, they inflate it a lot more. The pinch tool as well might not really do much on a flat surface, but will have a great effect on two larger areas. A lot of the tools really kind of say what they do, either in the icon or in the name. And as I said, I really would recommend just diving in and exploring. One thing that's a little bit clunky is the camera. It's got a lot of different keybinds, but the easiest keybind to remember is basically right click and on the background. So if I right click on the background, I can rotate. Let's make this a little bit clearer by just writing in pi. And if I right click on the background, it rotates quite nicely. If I control right click, it zooms in and out. Alt right click, moves around. And shift right click, it snaps into an angle, which you can also do in the upper right hand corner. If you want to rotate to this was on the spot, it's left click. So generally speaking, as a rule of thumb, if you want to mess around the angle, the view or anything, do it in the background and do it with your mouse and use keybinds to add onto them. Now, as a little pro tip here, when you are looking to start drawing, I think it's kind of fair to say that a lot of you have probably started off with standard. Now, standard, as you'd expect, is a standard brush. In my honest opinion, I find it quite lumpy. I find it quite bulbous. What I'd actually recommend if you're drawing for the first time is use the clay buildup. Now, a being a square may feel quite a bit more, I'd say limited, but it also gives you significantly more precision and it allows you to create sharper shapes. Let's say, for example, you want to make a snout. A lot of you guys like drawing animals. Let's try and make a snout of a creature. The first thing you're probably going to want to do is, you know, actually make the jaw itself, the mouth. And if you just, you know, just lump it on like that, now you've got this great big, very rectangular piece coming out. Whereas if we try to do the same thing with a standard tool, well, now it looks kind of bulbous and lumpy and just kind of strange. So let's go back to the clay build up. Now that we've got this bit of a weird shape here, try refining it. Try just doing little brush strokes right at the top. Maybe you want to get the little ridge between the eyes sorted first. So just go up and down. Yeah, you might get all these overlapping lines. That's okay. It's part of the construction. It's like doing a sketch on paper, isn't it? These are your construction lines. Maybe you want to emphasize the cheekbones a little bit more like that. Maybe you want to create a bit of an eye socket. And for that, you hold Alt. Imagine Alt is your inverse button. So if I hold Alt and make lines around here, now it digs back in. Like I said, Alt in general is the inverse. So now let's say we go to the slash tool, which in ZBrush is the damn standard for context. The slash tool always goes inwards anyway. So Alt, the inverse, now it goes outwards. And that's quite nice for doing things like eyebrows. Or perhaps you want petite little nostrils and you want to outline that as well, just by switching around between Alt and default. Let's give it a bit of a underjaw because right now the entire thing just looks kind of jagged, kind of strange. Mm, maybe the jaw's a little bit narrow, but you don't really want to keep on drawing more onto it. Maybe you just want to have like a very subtle pull without messing everything else. Well, that's what a move tool is good for. Using a move tool, you can then just slightly 
drag it downwards without really changing your construction lines or changing any impact that you've had. Maybe do the same at the front here, maybe you want a bit more of a boxy kind of snout. He'll be a little bit lighter, he'll be a little bit more forward and great big angry eyebrows. As you can see, it all kind of comes together quite nicely. But now you're probably thinking, oh, this looks kind of weird actually, it looks very very scratchy. It's got these weird lines and such. That's where shift comes into place. Shift is basically your smudge, your blur. You'll use that to kind of make things a lot tidier, really remove a lot of the creases, make things look a lot rounder. It's kind of like an eraser, but I think smoothing, blurring, maybe liquify, I think these are probably the best ways to describe it. It'll also reduce your polygons. Polygons are something very, very important, and the technical term for that is essentially, imagine your canvas size. Imagine you're used to using like a very, very large canvas, and you'll know that that gets quite laggy. There's a lot to work with. You have to like really zoom in to do like your little details. Polygons are like a 3D canvas, and the more polygons you have, the more complicated things get, and the more it lags. Don't worry, in ZBrush Core Mini, you just hold shift, and not only will it smoothen things, but it'll also remove the polygons. And that, I think, pretty much covers the basics of it. Now, I understand that may have been like a little bit rushed, a little bit unexpected. Like I said, this is not a tutorial. I just really want to give you guys like the hands-on approach and, you know, just how I personally do of this. It really is quite nice and simple, but I do think that there are some often, you know, some rather common mistakes people might get into, such as defaulting to the standard tool. You see how right here, for example, I'll draw the eye again there. I was doing it just completely out of habit. I like making the eyes, for example, if I have to sculpt them in the clay polish tool because even though it is so square and rectangular and strange just keep it doing circles look how nice and round it is it's a little bit blocky that's cool press shift now it's a ball now imagine that as opposed to the standard tool which just doesn't really work i mean you could like slash around you could maybe pinch it up a little bit but now it's getting all weird and pixelated it's just not very nice so, as I said, clay polish, you get a lot more control, a lot more precision, a lot more build-up, it's a lot faster, it's a lot easier. Combine that with shift, and you get a nice, clean surface. Now, of course, there's many more features that you can look at. There's things like the low, medium, high, that change your polygons, and it allows you to kind of reduce your canvas, just add a single click of a button. There's of course the materials over here as well, which change the materials that you can render it in. You can also export the image, just like you would a spore creation. So if you export the image, you can then actually give it to other people in ZBrush Core Mini, so they can also load your model and vice versa. And of course, in the top left hand corner, you've got open project, you've got save project, create new sphere, create new stone mesh, which is a new thing entirely. And that allows you to make statues and such, maybe words and letters, whatever you wish. Generally speaking, the way that you interact with the tools is pretty much the same. So as stated before, really not a tutorial, but more like a bit of a guide and a bit of advice for the people who I know have been struggling a lot with this, that I'd then like to just give to all of you as well. So I really do hope that this helps. I know it's not conventional, but it's honest, it's personal, and I really do hope that it gives you like a bit more things to think about and new ways to try out the various tools and elephants. I really would recommend just throwing yourself in, having fun. Your first sculpt should not be serious, it should just be an experiment to understand how to use the software. And then when you learn from it, try polishing it. Try turning your little silly sculpt into something a bit more serious. Try molding around it and then converting it into a natural project and see how you go from there. If you guys have any questions, I might not be the most informed, but I'm very eager to help and I would happily try to help and explain things further. So if you need any help, please let me know or ask in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Thank you all very much and have fun sculpting.